Today we're going to learn OSI model at each layer and the various attacks and how the various attacks can be prevented at each layer. This is going to be a four part series and you're watching part one of four video episodes. And in today's video, we will learn OSI model at a very high level. And one of the OSI model layers, how an attack or how it's vulnerable to attacks and the mitigation or mediation preventative controls that can be put to mitigate or at the very least minimize the impact of the attacker. Let's go ahead. Now, OSI stands for Open System Interconnection. It has been developed by ISO, which is the International Organization for Standardization, in the year 1984. It is a seven layer architecture with each layer having specific functionality to perform. All these seven layers work collaboratively to transmit the data from one person to another across the globe. Now, please remember that OSI is model is only a reference model that describes how information from a software application in one computer moves through a physical medium to a software application in another computer. Now to show you the each of the seven OSI layers, each layers have different function and here's how the layers are. Beginning with number one, uh, physical layer, second data link, third network layer, fourth transport layer, fifth session layer, sixth presentation layer, and last and the seventh application layer. Now also keep in mind that the layers from seven through four is the responsibility of the host or the computer itself. And from layer one to three, it's the responsibility of the network or the network devices. Also, the protocol data unit or the PDU is also different in different layers. For physical security, the data unit is symbols, bits, and ones and zeros. Data link layer, second layer is frames. For third network layer, it's packets. Fourth is data, datagram, or segment. And for layer five, six, and seven, it's just data. Now, how does it apply in the real world? Imagine that you're sending a mail or information right from the application layer, like you're sending your mail using your SaaS application Gmail. In that case, you're the sender. So every time you go ahead and send across any information, that and at every layer, an additional layer of header is added when it passes down each layer. So which means your application layer would pass on their information to presentation and the presentation to session and so hence and so forth. And at each layer, an additional header would be added. This process is called encapsulation. And when the receiver receives the data and then starts stripping out each and every header from each and every layer, right from the layer one physical layer to application layer layer seven, this process is called decapsulation. Hope that was understandable. Now for the purpose of this video, we're going to discuss only the attacks at the physical layer and the countermeasures that can be applied to mitigate the impact of these attacks. Let's begin. Now what's happening at layer one, physical layer? This is the lowest layer of OSI reference model and it's called the physical layer. It is responsible for actual physical connection between the devices. The physical layer contains information in the form of bits and it is responsible for transmitting individual bits from one node to another device. When receiving data, this layer will get signal received and will be converted into zeros and one, that is your binary, and then send them to data link layer, which is layer two, which will put the frame back together. Now that we have discussed layer one and how it works and what are the protocols that are involved, there are two ways how this layer can be attacked. That is a physical layer security attacks in a wired network and physical layer security attacks in a wireless network. I'll try to explain it with the help on with the attacks and the countermeasures that you can take to mitigate or minimize 
the impact of the attack beginning with the first one unknown hosts this type of attack happens when an unknown device or an unknown host is placed in your network and you have no way of knowing that it's sniffing your traffic or it's even in your network so what's a countermeasure for it so countermeasure for it would be applying a rogue device detection or protection mechanism an example would be applying a policy in your network that if any new MAC address is detected on your device to block it immediately until it is authorized to be allowed in your network through software or any hardware solution. Next type of attack, keylogger. This type of attack happens when an unknown or unauthorized, for the most part, a USB device is inserted in your computer and your computer trusts that's that device. However, the motive of the attacker is something else. The motive is to gain access to all the key logs on your computer so that it can be used later on to key log all the activity and extract sensitive information from the data you have key logged. And the only other way because the computer trusts that device is to have a physical inspection, making sure that the USB headsets, keyboards and mouse do not have any intermediary device in between them that appears suspicious. Next one, wiretapping. Although a very old or primitive way of attacking your physical air security, but it's a good information to have. And the only other way that you can realize or recognize a wiretapping attack is to do a physical inspection. Hope that was clear. Next one, the attacks are the preventative measures for physical layer security attacks in wireless networks. Let's try to explain them and the attacks of attacks and mitigating controls one by one. Beginning with the first one, that is physical attacks on a wireless network. How is that possible, you might ask? Well, even though it's a wireless network, the very device transmitting or the users connecting to the router or the wireless access point is still a physical device and it needs to be physically be protected. One countermeasure is the placement of the device. You might want to place it at a very high at location or a height so that it is out of reach from the attackers. Even if it's visible, it is still out of the reach. Next one, placement of evil twin. This is where an attacker places a network similar or the name of the network that is similar to your network. This makes your wireless network very vulnerable to attack. Why? Because if a legitimate user, an honest user connects to the evil twin, the, that user might end up giving all of the information to the evil twin or the rogue access point. So what's a way to countermeasure this? One of the ways is to use a sacrificial node. What's a sacrificial node? A sacrificial node is a sensor that keeps active in proximity of the attacker in order to protect other sensors at the risk of itself being detected and destroyed. So that's a risk that you would have to take. Another one, quite an obvious one, is to just go ahead and hide your SSID, which is the name of your network, also abbreviates for Service Set Identifier. Third, last one, the most probably the most important one, is to pre prevent man-in-the-middle attack. If you didn't know, even wireless networks are prone to man-in-the-middle attack. One simple way to protect or countermeasure the man-in-the-middle attack is simply ensuring that there is some kind of a key in place when you connect to your wireless network or that will use that key to generate the P key pairs while using it as a session key. Basically, you're just encrypting your, your entire wireless network. Hope that was clear. Now that explains at the physical layer how the security attacks can be done at wired and wireless network and how it can be prevented using a few countermeasures. This is only the part one of the four part video series. Next video, we will talk about layer two and layer three in OSI model, the attacks and how they can be mitigated or, or prevented. Also, do let me know in the comment below that which type of attack or which protocol abuse 
you would like me to cover for each and every layer. I'll try to make do my best to explain the protocol, the attacks, and the countermeasures, and put mitigating controls. Also, at the very least, share this video with your family and friends whom you think by benefit. And if you'd be so inclined to get any cybersecurity training, any consultation, I'll leave my email address down below. You feel free to contact, and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. All right, with that, I'll come to the end of this video. I hope you all have a great day ahead. Bye now.